if you're writing code earnestly, you should be surprising yourself about what you're writing. Because you should be like, oh, I need this method. Let me write it. Oh, I need this thing. Let me write it. Oh, I need this thing. Let me write it. And it's coming, it's coming, it's coming as you're going, but you know what your approach is. Right? Um, the, this is really where the recursion is happening. And if you just read it like this and ignore that this is the same thing that you're writing, it makes total sense, right? If it's, if it's valid, if it's not valid, kick yourself out. Um, if it's solved, return the board. And then find the next index and try everything in there and then create a new game for it and try that. It'll just bubble back up until you do something. It's gonna bubble back up, yeah. It's gonna, this false is gonna bubble back up, gonna try the next number, hit it, and then, then you got it. So it's recursion with nine, nine, new, <laughs> nine new branches for each level of recursion. For each MT. Yeah, for each MT. But really what's happening is the first number is try, and then you go down that whole rabbit hole for the first number, and then, yeah. and then you hit all the, all, the, all the nodes here, go all the way back up, and then try it two up here in that first number, and then try all the way, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not, it's not breadth first, it's depth first recursion. Now, this is the next <coughs> entity index equals board index zero. This is not very uh, kind of efficient, I'm just picking the next blank one. You really want the next blank one that's most likely where, where, where you can uh, quickly hit the walls, right? So this is where you can optimize. This line right here is where you would optimize, but really all I need here is like next empty index equals smart next empty index, and that's now a method called smart next empty index that you can write and optimize on, okay? Now, somebody asked about public versus uh, private. You notice solve is public, valid is public. Uh, I think uh, the other one that's public is solved, question mark is public, right? Uh, but really, all the ones about like you know, prepare rows and columns, no dupes, all that stuff. You don't do that to a, you don't do that to a game. You don't come up to a game and go, prepare rows and columns. That doesn't make sense. You go up to a game and you say, is it solved? You know, is it valid? Is it solvable? These are external customers can use the game to do that. But private custom, private methods use the game privately. The decision to do what what is private and what is public is half the battle here because that really means you've thought clearly about how this piece of software is going to be used. What method, what, what, um, you know, these, the board, I made board out of reader because it makes sense that I might want to look at the board. If I have a Sudoku game, I can read the board. But to make rows, columns, and boxes out of readers doesn't make sense. These are all, these are kind of internal methods for it, right? So if you're not arguing with your pair about what should be public or private, you're not thinking about it enough. Or something, or something I think you should really pay attention to. Same thing as if you're not arguing about names. Or not arguing about, like, should we comment this? No, we shouldn't comment it. We should make the methods more explicit and break it down. So even this one method, um, uh, columns for, a uh, boxes for, right, which was a one-line method, still not clean enough, and I think Strand is right, I would have broken down that one line into multiple other methods. That so are much so more Rick, can you bring up the final solved uh, bang, your solved bang method? It's near the end, right before the white screen. So. I'm looking at this right now, and I'm wondering, Shree, like a year later, a year after doing this in 10 minutes, how would you change this method to improve it? Yeah, this, this you could extract this, definitely, mm -hmm. right? Like this is definitely, this is another method that you could extract. Um, you'll get a sense of like nice, tight methods that do one thing, you know, they're just like, cool. But a very, very common beginner mistake is to think that methods somehow take a part of your flesh, like you feel like they're so expensive. <laughs> But they're actually really cheap. Like, like I look at this and I see this should actually be some sort of if else chain, uh, and the return value, the implicit return value of that, is the return value of solve. I think that there's a, a little bit of refactor there, so it's much more readable. Where if it's valid, then it so you would put these in if else's. Yeah. And then I, I would avoid if else. I, I like the break statements at the top, but but if we're not having this argument, then you're not coding basically, right? Like that, the, the point is not what the right answer is, the point is that you thought about it. Like, like I don't love conditionals, but I love conditionals more than uh, the breaking returns. I so like, like I would returns. avoid the returns <laughs> if possible. That's me. Uh, you got a question? Yeah, so I understand, uh, I understand the return to example part, yeah. but like the way that I always thought about it is that you have a multitude of possible values. How do you eliminate those values without like, aren't you assigning a value there even if you're entirely unsure whether or not that's the final one or no? Ask me a question again. Right. 
My name is Benny. He's so, guessing. Yeah, he's guessing, but there's still a multitude of possible guesses that will work unless you know all the other values. Unless you know the full range for like the row, the column, or the box, you can have more than one value that's appropriate for that guess. Yes. So how do you solidify that one node and how you, you know, you just try it. Yeah. And then you try solving the rest of the puzzle based on that assumption. And if it's false, then it's and if it's false. Because remember, I'm gonna the first blank, I'm gonna put a one in it. Yeah. Right? After I put a one in it, I'm going to create a new game and go game dust solve. Okay. I now I'm that. back here again with the one already in blocked there, and then I'm gonna get the next empty one and try all the ones. And so I'm gonna keep going and going and going and going and going until I make sure that one is not working. I'm gonna get a bunch of falses bubbling up back again. So we've tried everything with this one, sorry son, it's not gonna work. Not bad. Like infinite memory, infinite speed, very right. stupid. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's not optimized at all, and that's a problem, but the computer still does it reasonably quick. That's just like almost impossible for me to think about it's so much. But just, yeah, you, you try, I bet you all your solutions were trying to be too smart. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You were not depending on, this is the thing, like when my um, co-founder Jesse would teach us, he would say, imagine you had infinite papers and it took no time to fill a new one. Like you just said, you were doing Sudoku and you're like, ah, oh, duplicate, it, it's as if like, but but when you think about Sudoku, you're like, oh, I have a pencil and I have to really make the right choice. This one. Yeah. But that's like, you're just not a human. You're, you're now a developer, right? And that's that's what trips you up in this solution is that you're trying to be human. Right. Like, you're literally like in one like spot, you're putting in a value, and then you're building an entire board based upon that value to yes. get that board is down. Yes. And if it's not, then you do the next number in that same spot. Exactly. And you move it along building like a, literally a billion different Wow. What what I see in this is that as humans we die, and so we <laughs> and, and so it's important to us to make right choices, and so we're all trying to write programs that don't make mistakes. Yes. And for a computer, it doesn't care if it makes a mistake because it never dies. You your sense of your sense of time and mortality. And space has to be has to shift dramatically in order to become a software developer, and that's part of what this, this pro, uh, pro, problem is designed to have you, have you think about. You cannot think like a human. You can't. You know, the, the way software solves problems is very different than the way humans solve problems. And you are that interface now between human and machine. So you have you have to make that switch. And memento mori. Remember that you will die. Remember, and remember you will die, so don't spend too much of your life solving Sudoku. By the real life all software. Are there any um, other questions about Sudoku? Uh, just that bug bug at the end, like why does it make it all yellow? Does that just mean it's... That's, a bug, that's actually a bug with Sublime Text. Yeah. Oh. It's the modulus sign. Um, made everything yeah. else yellow. Yeah, yeah. oh. that was the modulus, not the, not the And he chose bug bug in caps just because the chances bug, of you bug. running into a constant named bug bug? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually standard. It's actually kind of standard uh, convention. Um, can you go into like the characteristics of uh, why you talk uh, problem personally and person differently? Mm -hmm. Um, so hard. It's kind of a pattern that you see over and over. You go into Sudoku, go into Socrates and solve every single recursive problem, you'll find this one. It's when like, it's when I'm, I'm, it's when I need to keep track of the past in a, in a certain way. I'm iterating and I'm doing the same thing over and over. There's a loop here, but the loop is, is doing the same thing and it's tracking what's happening in the past and I need to be able to bubble up. That's a terrible description. I don't know how to describe it. Um, the problem gets smaller. I, I think that I would say I solve a problem recursively when the problem wants to be solved. Ah! <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know that saying, like, to, to iterate is human, to recurse is divine. Um, there is something kind of really awesome when you, when you, when you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the answer. To that. Um, but what I would, what I would, what I would do if you're into it, is kind of go in and, and uh, 
and just do a bunch of problems that are recursive problems, like factorial and prime, like just do, just get into it more and more and more. And you'll get you'll get a feel for it. It doesn't come up that much in like real life. Um, there are many methods that call other methods that call that method, especially in Rails. There's a ton of that going on. But don't get too tripped up on recursion. It's just one more pattern to put in your toolbox. I, and I, I was joking earlier, but um, the common pattern I see in recursive, uh, in, in things that might call for recursion, are there is a large problem, and all of the small problems in it are similar to it. Yeah, or even let's let's take all that back. Forget that I that I said I'm gonna. This is gonna be a recursive solution. I was writing this. I was going about earnestly following my my thought and writing this method. And at some point here, I went, okay, for each attempt, I need to create a new board and then solve it. And maybe right here is when I discovered this is gonna be a recursive solution, right? Maybe not by design. Maybe I just, you know, initially if I'm a beginner, I'm just like, well. If it's valid, if it's solved, create the boxes, create the rows, create the columns, I'm following, I'm following, now I need to solve this new board. Wait a minute, I already have a method that solves boards. It's uh, the method that I'm in right now. Yeah. This is a recursive solution, right? Mm -hmm. Just kind of earnestly follow your, your track, your train of thought. But I feel like most problems, most business problems are iterative. Right, just reiterating what, what uh, Cherie said, this don't, trip out on recursion and spend your next week, like all your evenings, like I have to get recursion. Um, get OO. It's good to be able to think recursively, but it's something that develops over time. And we want you to know that it, it is powerful. It can, it can solve very complex problems in a very elegant way and be able to converse about recursion. Yeah, well, yeah definitely at this point in the game, what I would focus on is good naming, short type methods, uh, difference between public and private, knowing why, having arguments about it, um, and then, um, yeah, good, well-named variables, <coughs> writing the code you're going to use first, and then, and then fleshing out the methods afterwards. No um, sort of numbers like nine floating around. That's a bug. You know, it's not actually a, it's not a bug in terms of it's a bug in terms of this is not maintainable code. Suddenly there's Sudoku with 20 columns, and you have to go and you can change it 50, 50 different places, right? Uh, so anytime you see a number like nine, that that's actually a constant that goes up there gets, and, and gets used. That's really what you want to be focused on. It's just good readable code. The three audiences for your code, your future self, the other developers, and the user. Um, and then keeping that in mind as you're, as, you're, as you're pairing. And recognize that as developers, you're going to be cursing your past self a lot. Yeah. Be kind to your past selves. They didn't know us. They didn't know that much. <laughs> they didn't know nearly as much as you'll know tomorrow. <laughs> That, any other questions? Uh, yeah. um, how would you generate all possible valid Sudoku boards? How would you do that? <laughs> all possible valid Sudoku boards? Because my first well, that's when you, as a developer, realize that you don't have infinite time and space. <laughs> like, that's, that's actually an impossibility. Right. Um, I mean, you tell me, how would you do it? Cool. My, first, my first reaction to this problem was like my program direction, which is to do a permutation or a combination of every possible thing, including things that are not in the right place, run this, store it in a sort of hash dictionary table, and then you get the thing, I look it up and I Well, but you don't, because once you have one and then one one, you don't really need to generate all the rest, which would take infinity time. Um, but really, you, <laughs> you should stop right there at one one. So using, to this is a good point of reusable code. A lot of this code would be reusable, like valid would be reusable, solved would be re solved would be reusable, right? So really, what you're doing is starting from a blank board, picking go and going one through nine, and then adding another number one through nine, and then checking valid, valid, valid. If it's not valid, then move out. You could also do it with a reverse solution. Sounds like you're going to be doing that over the weekend, and then there's a wait. It's Monday, right? Uh, maybe not the weekend, but it, I, it would be a fun thing to go to experiment. It's um, the that you would it, it would take a supercomputer the size of the sun with every molecule being an Intel processor to go through all this. <laughs> There's no, it's it's it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. But you might get like a few hundred thousand if you let it run for a while. <laughs> Guys, it's uh, it's been fun. I take it easy on those two. Um, we're the best we could find. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks.